And it's AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM. Who's my spokesperson here, Michelle? Are you the the total spokesperson for this final Penns Manor School appearance of the year? No, uh, Mr. Grimaldi is away at a conference today, so Mrs. Zeglin, our assistant principal, came, and she brought some elementary students with her. Oh, wonderful. You're not going to talk, are you, because you're filming. Okay, come on over and find a microphone here, and you can introduce. She's going to make her way around. We've got our microphone set up for tall and less tall here this morning. I don't know which category you're in, but I just, okay. I'm in the middle. (laughs) Okay. We have, uh, today we have three first graders from Mrs. Bodepivik's first grade classroom. We have Allison Lieb, Marley Smochak, and Gavin Formball with us today. And they're going to share everything that they know about fractured fairy tales. Fractured fairy tales. Okay. So everybody knows who you are when you speak. Go ahead and and say your name and then you can go ahead. (laughs) Allison. Okay. In our classroom, we read and wrote fractured fairy tales. The definition of a fractured fairy tale is a story that uses fairy tales that you know and then changes the character, setting, point of view, or the plot. Marley. A fractured fairy tale includes characters, maybe a prince, princess, or talking animals, They have a setting, which could be a castle, the forest. It also includes story events. The plot often things happen in threes, and it's about good versus bad. A fractured fairy tale may also teach a lesson or moral. For example, work hard or always be yourself. Gavin, a fractured fairy tale usually begins with once upon a time, and they end with... Happy Ever Endings. Some examples of a fractured fairy tale we read in class were The Three Little Wolves and the Big Bad Pig, Goldilocks and the, F- Goldie Rocks and the Three Bears, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, Little Red and the Very Hungry Lion, Little Red's Riding Hood. The story I wrote is called The Three Little Ninjas and the Big Bad Wolf. The first little ninja cut down five trees. He stacked them on a pine tree. Then he went in. The second little ninja broke some ferns and three sticks and piled the ferns on the sticks and went in to take a nap. The third little ninja gathered some rocks in the river. He got ten rocks. He went into his building site and set to work. He went to eat. He went in to eat. The wolf went in the forest. He smelled the ninjas. He saw the first little ninja. He said, little ninja, little ninja, let me come in. No, okay, then I'll blow your house down. He did. The ninja ran to the brother's he house. The wolf ran after him. He saw the second little ninja's house. He said, little ninja, little ninja, let me come in. No, then I'll blow your house down. The two ninjas ran to the third little ninja's house, and the wolf ran after them. He said, little ninja, little ninja, let me come in. No, then I'll go. Then I'll blow your house down. I don't care. Then I'll go down the chimney. And he did he fell in the soup, and they ate him for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gavin. Uh, so, folks, know you, say your name again so we know. Allison. Title, Little Red and the Big Good Wolf. Once upon a time at the studio, Little Red was getting ready for the next show. The Big Good Wolf was getting ready, too. Then they started playing their song. So Little Red and the Big Good Wolf were playing their song and noticed they had ten fans. So they left the studio and went to find more fans. They found four more fans in the forest, but they wanted 20 fans. So they went off. In Candyland, they found six more fans. And four plus ten plus six equals 20. So Little Red and the Big Good Wolf and the fans went back to the studio and played their song. Beautiful. What a great story. Marley, title, Seriously, My Sips. Sisters talk too much. Once upon a time, the prince gave letters to go to the ball. He gave the letters to all the people in his town. 
The stepsisters talk all day and all night. Cindy tells them nicely to be quiet. One year later, Cindy and her stepsisters were playing with each other. They were playing princesses. They were nice to each other. Cindy was the queen. Her stepsisters, Rose and Sunflower, were the princesses. They all had a good time together. They all loved each other, and they all had a happy ending. There you go. Well, thank you. Boy, first grade is having a good time with Fractured Fairy Tales at Men's Manor Elementary. I was enthralled. <laughs> That's a hard act to follow. I'm telling you, these guys got to do that. Oh, uh, I guarantee mine won't talk as much as those ones. Oh, won't they? <laughs> mine, mine are all nervous and quiet. <laughs> oh, we need to put flowers in the girls' hair, too, because the elementary girls have flowers in their hair. Too. And they look beautiful. Don't they? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I brought three students with me today. Um, two of them, Brody Jackson and Megan Schwartz, are going to talk. Uh, they both qualified for district track. Mm-hmm. And then I also bought, brought with me Catherine Fackler, who's going to talk about our FBLA blood drive coming okay. up. Okay, very good. Who's first, Catherine, well, or, Catherine. or the others? Catherine is first. <laughs> Hi, I'm Catherine Fackler. I'm a junior at Penns Manor Area High School. I'm secretary of FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America, and I'm running for president for the next school year. Um, Our blood drive is next Friday, May 19th, and our high school gym from 8.30 a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. You'll get to see students, and you'll get to meet with the nurses from the Red Cross, and you'll get to help save lives along the road. So we hope hope to see you there. There you go. It's open to anybody, correct? Open to anybody. You can come Mm -hmm. in, walk-ins are welcome. We'll still take your blood and save a life in the process. Take your blood as long as it's red. Yes. (laughs) Very good. Thank you, Catherine. I appreciate that. Next, we have Brody Jackson and Megan Schwartz. Okay. Good morning, young track athletes and field athletes. Hi, um, I'm Megan Schwartz. I'm a freshman. Uh, It's my first year doing track, and I qualified in three events. I qualified in 300 hurdles, long jump, and the 4x4 relay. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And the state meets this weekend, isn't it? Uh, districts is Tuesday. District district meet is Tuesday. Yes. And where is it being run? Uh, Altoona. Altoona. Yeah. Okay. Mansion Park? Yes. All right. Very good. Sounds wonderful. You enjoy it? You're a freshman, so it's your first varsity experience, huh? Yes. Enjoying it? Yes. Yeah? Blisters? Uh, no. No? Nope. She avoided blisters. You're not running hard enough. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, congratulations, and uh, we wish you the best at districts coming up. And then maybe, you. maybe you're in the States if, if yeah. you do well enough there. I hope so. You think so? I hope. What's your strongest event? Um, long jump right now. The long jump? Yeah. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Good luck to you. Now this young man doesn't look like he does hurdles. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Brody Jackson. Uh, I'm a junior at Penn's Manor. I'm a thrower, track and field. Uh, I qualified in disc, 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 had discus. Uh, overall, I mean, it's, I like playing. That's the only sport I play. Mm-hmm. It's a good individual sport. Uh, and it's, you know, if you lose or don't do good, it all comes back on you. So it's all up to you. Yeah. It's all up to Push you. Push yourself to do better. I was driving by the school on Sunday on my way out of town and, and, uh, there was somebody there, uh, practicing shot put. I assume yeah. it looked like it was Bryce, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Was Bryce on it was the probably, shot putter. Probably him. Yeah. He practices yeah. a lot. So discus so, is your main throwing event? Yeah, or that's only? Uh, that's pretty much what I'm good at, so that's what uh-huh. I stick with. All right. So, well, it just seems so hard to control when you're throwing discus. Yeah. But, yeah, it's tough. You gotta have good balance and you know you gotta practice a lot. So now you said what year are you? I'm a junior this you're, year. You're a junior, so yeah. you've been you've been throwing discus how long? Uh three years now. Uh huh. So. Think back to when you first started and trying to control that thing and let get it to land where you wanted it to land. Yeah, How it, hard was that? It, it was pretty rough. Yeah, uh, yeah. It took me probably most part of the whole season, freshman season, to start throwing it good. Take yeah. out any windows, cars, or competitors? Uh no, no. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't. <laughs> um, but, as you, as you as this season has gone on, um, how has it gone for you? Have you done well? Uh, actually, I uh, did good. Probably first four or five. Uh, meets and then kind of went downhill from there mm-hmm. so uh for some reason i peaked at the beginning and uh haven't really done real good since i uh, have to put it together though you got yeah. districts coming up yeah 
we'll uh, work on it the rest of this week and see what we do next week. Yeah, and of course it's a team sport, so uh, I'm sure the, the rest of the athletes on the track and the field teams are, are working hard at it too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Beautiful. All right, well, thanks for coming in to tell us about that. All District right. 6 meet is coming up at Altoona's Mansion Park. Mrs. Dolges, <laughs> good morning again. Good morning. We're wrapping up the end of the school year. Uh, kids starting the Keystone exams next week, and then we've got graduation coming up and senior trip, and so it's pretty lively at the school right now. Every, everybody's busy. <laughs> yeah, I would bet. Have you had prom yet? Uh, prom is this Friday. It's this Friday. This Friday, yes. Yeah. So they're they're excited. I'm sure everybody will look gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. They have to. They will, everybody will look very, very nice. We hope that it's a safe event. Uh, um, prom activities, uh, everything taking place at the school or traveling? Uh, we're, uh, we have our prom at Contra Screw Social Hall in Northern Cambria. Mm-hmm. So we go there for the dinner and the, and the dance. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we're excited. All right. Very, very good. And this is your last school visit of the, of the school year for this year, huh? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We, we will be back then in September. We certainly have enjoyed having everybody come in, especially these last couple of months with these we had uh, nursery rhymes, and, mm-hmm. and now we've had fractured fairy tales. And, <laughs> yep. and my goodness, it's been so so much fun. I'm always amazed at how much the elementary school kids do. You know, I, I think back to when I was in kindergarten and the things that they do now, you know, from years ago, it's they seem so, so much further ahead. First graders can read really well. You folks, mm-hmm. did, you were great readers today. And congrats. You wrote those fractured fairy tales, too? Mm-hmm. Each of you wrote your own? Mm-hmm. That was fantastic. Your whole class, each each member of the class did their own? Oh, it sounds like so much fun. We didn't do that when I was a kid. By golly, I wish we had. Well, thank you all for coming in. Thanks to Penn's Manor for being a part of our student visits. Thanks for having us. It is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank. It's AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM.